Hello, welcome to the Stockyard Industrial Lead. I'm Eric Miller, and today I want to talk about what is called a one turnout layout. Uh, if any of you are unfamiliar with this uh, subject or topic or term, it basically refers to a layout that only has one turnout on it. It's a very minimalistic way to build and design a layout, as, as you can guess. Um, but it's got some very, very good implications, I think, to larger layouts. Um, it's something that I definitely wouldn't consider doing myself unless I was just starting out a new layout and I wanted to get started on it. Um, but I wanted to bring up the topic and how it impacts a larger layout. So first, a little background on the one turnout layout. This is, of, of course, a subject that has been uh, popularized, I think, by Lance Minheim and something that he discusses at great length. And below, I'll link a, a link, um, I'll put a link to his webpage on it where he describes it in, in a little bit more detail. Um, but in essence, what it is, and I'll show you this um, track diagram that I have here for reference, it's basically a, um, a layout that all you have is, is one turnout. And so essentially it would be if you had a layout that's similar to this with just kind of your mainline track and then having a spur to one customer. So it might seem pretty basic and you might think at first, well, you know, there's, there's not a whole lot that you can do with a layout like that. I mean, could it even be described as a layout? And so what I want to show to you today is how you, actually you can do a lot of stuff in one spur. And I, I think a lot of you that um, follow this channel and are into small switching layouts and might have a small switching layout yourself, or at least a layout with a lot of switching in it, you probably know this already that, yeah, you can actually do a lot um, in just one spur. But I wanted to, to show that to you uh, a little bit further. So what I've what I've I've thought about this myself, and like I said, I would I would never just have a layout with only one spur because I kind of like having a little bit more variety. And I think with a, a small switching layout, it's important to have at least two locations so that we have a little bit of interest and in, uh, something else that I've kind of championed is having you know an open scenery zone in the middle of it. Um, but I think it's really important to consider this topic. So on my layout, I basically thought of all my industries and I, I went through this kind of um, thinking if I had to reduce my layout to just one industry what would it be and I decided it would be this uh, ready mix concrete layout because there's so much going on and I'll show you so what we've got going on here is I, I brought in our local which uh, today is being powered by the old uh, Alco C415 there and so we got a cut of cars here for the ready mix concrete and so ready mix concrete is based off of a prototype which was the Wilson concrete in Bellevue, Nebraska that the Union Pacific switched and uh, more than getting uh, than importing concrete or I should say cement and sand and gravel they actually exported a lot of like bridge components and so that's something that I've incorporated into this one but I've also added getting cement and concrete um, because there's some gravel pits um, in the eastern Nebraska area, and I thought it would be cool to have some local stuff like that. And that's another reason why I like it. I like the variety in freight cars. I like the kind of local stuff that I have, like you'll see the Ashgrove cement hopper, and then I've got an OL and B, Omaha Lincoln and Beatrice hopper, some of the stuff that I've done myself. So if I could only keep one industry, this would definitely be it. But as I mentioned, there's a lot going on. And so with a one turnout layout, um, you want to have some variety. And so this one, has has quite a bit so you can see right here i've got where the uh, bridge components are loaded and eventually what i want to do is is um, build an overhead crane i'm obviously nowhere close to being done with the structures and scenery in this area but that's where that's loaded um, obviously the the track is complete and the switching can still be done even though I, I still need to work on the scenery and here's the the plan itself that takes the cement and sand and so we've got um, uh, unloading area here that can go in and, and store the product in, in that. And then uh, basically what we, we get is like cement and covered hoppers, sand and gravel in the open hoppers, and then also sand in these covered hoppers. So, so like I said, a lot going on. And so anytime you switch here, it's going to take a little bit of work. Now, the reason that you'll need at least one turnout is to do any sort of switching. So for this one, for example, um, if we want to work on these cars and notice this gondola isn't unloaded yet, first I'll take the, the blue flag away as the industry foreman 
and we'll come in. We have to um, move this uh, gondola. So go ahead and do that. And another thing you need to do is flag the crossing as per my operating rules. So just put some flags there. So this will show you why you, you definitely need at least one, um, one turnout. And obviously, I, I think it's something important to consider whenever you're designing, um, especially for small switching layouts, is if anywhere, you, anytime you can reduce the number of turnouts is really nice. And so a lot of, I don't know, maybe a lot of model railroaders might think at first that an industry like this would require, I don't know, maybe two or three spurs. You know, you might, you might have a spur that can handle the um, bridge component loading. You could have a spur for the sand and gravel and then you could have a spur for the cement. Uh, but actually you can do it all in one spur and a lot of industries will just have that um, because it's a lot more cost effective. Um, and then it basically just takes the railroad a little bit extra time to switch, but it's also less maintenance intensive because anytime you throw in a, a switch, you've got the movable parts, um, you've got the, the frog, which is could be an issue, so. So something you definitely want to consider in layout design is the number of switches and turnouts that you have. So this shows you that, you know, now we've got the gondola out of the way, we can let, leave it here off on the main line and then actually switch the rest of the industry. So I just kind of wanted to show you that as an example. Um, so why do we, why is it important to consider um, one turnout layouts if we're actually not going to build them? Well, I think it's important to think about because when you're plotting your industries that you want to have on your layout, um, whether it be five or 10, um, you want to consider that just having one customer doesn't mean that each customer is going to be the same. You could have a lot of business at one site. And so just having even two or three customers on a small switching layout and even just um, one spur for that customer, you can still have quite a bit of work. And so, you know, for example, contrast this customer, which has one spur, with my Bellevue Leader customer that, you know, sometimes in an op session won't even be switched. Um, but this one will, will definitely get service just because of the sheer amount of cars that I have set up. And in my, for my JMRI, I have it set by location of how many um, cars need to be switched at this location. And since this handles the bulk of the, loca of the, of the cars, of, of um, the space here in Bellevue for for switching the spurs, and it definitely gets a lot of a lot of business. So let's see. Let's go ahead and pull this train back a little bit. I'm just gonna go ahead and oops, going the wrong way. Try that again. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and and just kind of show off the locomotive a little bit, and then move it back into that turnout. Because let's say that what we want to do is pull out the empty cars first. And the rail fan there on the street probably wants to see the locomotive, I'm guessing. So as for me with my layout, once I started thinking more about the kind of one turnout layout idea, then it, it actually led me to um, take out a couple more industries because I realized that there really is a lot of work here. And as I mentioned before, I don't think you wanna try to consume your layout operators that are visiting you and, and uh, helping you with the layout. I don't think you wanna consume them with you know a bunch of menial tasks. I think. You know, you want to make it fun and you want to make it enjoyable for them to come and operate. And so I think that, you know, just making sure that if, if you, there's enough work at a certain industry, um, then you don't need to have a, a ton of industries or customers on the layout.
So this is basically how this customer gets switched, just as an example. And I've, I've obviously um, still got a ways to go here, but what I would do next, and I won't bore you with the whole operation here because it does take a while. Um, but what I would do next then is, is pull these uh, loaded car or pull any empties out. And the other thing that makes this a little bit more complex is, you know, maybe the industry hasn't unloaded all of them yet. Um, maybe there's, let's see, there we go. Um, Ooh. All right, there we go. We lost our connection there a little bit. Anyway, so yeah, maybe the industry hasn't unloaded all the cars yet. And so, you know, there could be something as complex as, you know, you just have to, you know, grab a couple cars in the back or maybe something in the middle. And so that, that'll take some time too. And then by the time you get those cars switched out and swapped up front and then move these cars back and then set the gondola back, you know, you're probably looking at at least 30 minutes, if not maybe upwards to an hour of doing a, a little op session. So, so I think a, a one turnout layout can be very um, fulfilling, you know, and, and uh, provide you with, with a little bit and, a you know, a little bit of operations and it's not going to take much to get going. So, so it's something to consider, I think, when you are, if you're first building a small switching layout. But as I mentioned, I think it's important to consider for any size layout that, you know, a customer can actually have this, even with just one spur, can still have a lot of work. And so as you're, you're designing your layout, even before you start operating it, you might th uh, th take that into consideration. And, and uh, something else that Lance Minheim talks a lot about is you don't want to clutter your layout with all sorts of industries. Uh, you want to make it realistic and try to replicate the real world out there. And so these, these uh, one turnout layouts kind of help, help put that in perspective, I think. All right. So basically that's it. I just wanted to show that to you. I wanted to talk about that idea and how it's helped me with my layout planning a little bit and how much fun it is to operate even just one customer. And even with uh, the ready mix concrete here, you know, sometimes um, I'll just operate that only because maybe, you know, it, it has a few extra cars that it needs to be spotted because of all the business that goes on here. And that's one of the, the nice things I think for that a short line can do because we've got the locomotive just hanging out at the yard office, pretty much ready to go. Uh, we've also got a pretty reliable crew. If need be, we can steal the crew from the car shops industry and use them in a pinch. So we've always got, we can uh, help the customer out whenever they need it. So, all right, anyways, that's, that's it for today. Just a, a quick little video on that topic. I hope you found that enjoyable and um, maybe informative. If you have any questions about that, let me know. And also if there's any other videos that you wanna see from me, as always, just let me know. As it's a, a new year, I've got some new topics that I'll be coming at you with. Um, in the future, I'm gonna be taking a look in detail at some of these uh, industrial spurs and the operations that I do on them and the things that I add to enhance the operations. I've I realize that in a lot of my videos, I've kind of glossed over some of that stuff. So I want to go into a little bit more detail on that. Um, so those are some of the things that I'll be coming up with here in the near future. So again, thank you for watching everyone. And I will catch you next week here on the Stockyard Industrial.